I love when I've been wrong because I get humbled and I learn. Somewhere along the way, I was fed some information that turned out to be wrong. And I'd prefer to have the facts personally. And I know things change. Maybe new research comes out that uncovers something new and we learn. That's normal. 6,000 years ago, the Mayans thought they needed to sacrifice someone each day for the sun to rise again and again. Well, that wasn't true, so we don't do that anymore. I think what I'm going to talk to you about today, melatonin, and what I am seeing in the research is extremely profound and impactful to you, me, and well, everyone. It might be more powerful than learning sacrificing someone each day wasn't necessary. I am big on supplements, supplements that I know will benefit me. I take omega-3s, methylated B-complex, magnesium glyconate, sometimes zinc, sometimes NAC when I have a lung infection, sometimes vitamin D when I'm not getting enough sun, creatine, and that's about it. It takes a lot of research, anecdotes, and any other kind of material information to sell me on adding another supplement to my regimen. My wife has taken melatonin for quite some time now. She uses it for better sleep, and I think we all know that connection, sleep and melatonin. We've given it to our feral children at times when going for a long plane ride, and, and it works. They pass out. I've taken it before when dealing with sleep issues for one reason or another, and I believe it was efficacious. I slept well. And there's a ton of research out there demonstrating the sleep benefits that come with taking melatonin. So before I get into this, comment down below. Do you take melatonin for how long, and, and what are the benefits that you've noticed and do you take it for any other reasons besides sleep but this was always what stopped me from taking it regularly and I, I preached this message to my wife and anyone else that asked me what I thought about it and it has everything to do with what is called a negative feedback loop so let me explain our bodies produce melatonin it is an indolamine hormone produced by the pineal gland and plays an extremely important role in our circadian rhythms which regulate our sleep and wake cycles so we make it endogenously Many researchers believe that exogenous melatonin, melatonin taken orally or intravenously, affected the amount of melatonin we would make endogenously, meaning our body sees the melatonin floating around in our blood from the pill we chewed and says, hmm, I see plenty of melatonin. Looks like we don't need to make as much or make any. In essence, if I take a pill form of melatonin, I stop producing as much of it because my body becomes reliant on the external source, which is simply not true. When I heard this, my opinion started to change and I began to dig a little deeper. By the way, it all started when I was scrolling through the YouTube feed and this nutritionist popped up talking about maxing out melatonin dosage, reverse tapering to get the max dose, something that 600 milligrams, which is a crazy high amount. It was at that exact moment when I thought either this guy's crazy or maybe he's onto something. And it turns out he is onto something. A cursory search of the benefits of melatonin brought up some really cool and interesting stuff. Turns out melatonin is an extremely powerful lipophilic antioxidant and is a free radical scavenging powerhouse. Vitamin E is super powerful antioxidant. It turns out that melatonin is twice as powerful. It also has a huge anti-inflammatory role as well as immunomodulatory action. Researchers are now looking at melatonin and its effect on obesity, cardiovascular diseases, immune disorders, infectious diseases, cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, osteoporosis, and even infertility. So if you like this kind of information, be sure to like and subscribe. It motivates me and keeps me putting out stuff like this. So Let's I talk briefly about where it comes from because it's just cool to know. Melatonin derives from tryptophan, which is a naturally occurring amino acid. Tryptophan is converted to serotonin following hydrogen hydroxylation and decarboxylation reaction. Serotonin is converted to melatonin in two sequential reactions, catalyzed by ari alkylamine and acetyl transferase and hydroxy indole o methyl transferase with n acetyl serotonin as the intermediate product. Many researchers believe that mitochondria are the primary sites of melatonin synthesis due to the presence of the needed enzymes to produce it. And this would make sense because it is the mitochondria where the most reactive oxygen oxygen species are created and where the most oxidative stress happens and where the most antioxidants are needed to combat the oxidative stress. Now let's dig into some of the powerful effects that melatonin is purported to have and see what the research says. First, it's antioxidant properties. Oxidative stress is a common feature of various pathological conditions like metabolic, degenerative, and cardiovascular disorders, and even cancer. It occurs when there is an excess of free radicals and not enough antioxidants 
antioxidants. Free radicals, you've probably heard that a lot, such as ROS or reactive oxygen species are very reactive and short-lived and are generated by oxygen metabolism. As long as the body's antioxidant defenses can sufficiently scavenge these free radicals, there are no pathological injuries. When the system is overwhelmed, disease happens in whatever form it may come. It could be cancer, heart attack, Alzheimer's, etc. So melatonin supports several intracellular enzymatic antioxidant enzymes, including superoxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase. Through its ability to activate antioxidant enzymes and scavenging of free radicals, this is how melatonin achieves its top of the leaderboard award of best antioxidant. A study out of the pharmacological research, the effect of melatonin supplementation on oxidative stress parameters, a systematic review, and meta-analysis looked at a total of 12 randomized controlled trials. The meta-analysis indicated an association between melatonin intake and a significant increase in total antioxidant capacity, and that melatonin was shown to have a significant impact on improving oxidative stress parameters. So what about inflammation? Many other studies are showing that melatonin is also an anti-inflammatory molecule and can regulate the activation of the immune system by reducing both chronic and acute inflammation and modulating the expression of pro and anti-inflammatory cytokines. It can exert its an anti-inflammatory action through the inhibition of nuclear factor kappa beta and suppressing of cyclooxygenase 2 expression, COX-2. There are many other inflammatory pathways being studied relative to melatonin, but the gist of it is it, it blunts inflammation in the course of chronic inflammatory diseases by lowering levels of inflammatory mediators such as interleukin-6, interleukin-8, COX-2, and nitric oxide synthase, and limits the production of other inflammatory mediators like chemokines, prostanoids, C-reactive protein, and leukotrienes. A study out of the European Journal of Nutrition, Melatonin Supplementation and Pro-Inflammatory Mediators, a systematic review and meta-analysis of clinical trials looked at 13 eligible trials. The results of the study and the data sets examined demonstrated support that melatonin supplementation was effective in ameliorating inflammatory mediators. One more study out of the pharmacological research effects of exogenous melatonin supplementation on health outcomes, an umbrella review of meta-analysis based on randomized controlled trials highlighted some very significant results. One, melatonin in Alzheimer's improves the instrumental activities of daily living. Two, pregnancy rates in women with antiretroviral therapy showed improvement with melatonin intervention. Three, perioperative patients' needs for analgesics was significantly reduced. And four, side effects of radiochemotherapy of cancer improved with melatonin. Melatonin. This is a big deal. In the last two decades, there has been mounting evidence that a reduction in melatonin is a risk factor for various diseases, cardiovascular disease being one. We have seen how low nocturnal levels associated with an increased risk of ischemic myocardial injury hypertension, atherosclerosis, and heart failure. Something also very relevant today, evidence is strongly pointing toward melatonin use in obesity treatment and the prevention of obesity complications. It is showing it may be a good approach to target brown adipose tissue, an active metabolic tissue capable of converting extra energy into heat. It acts as a slimming agent in humans due to its ability to promote the growth and metabolic activity of brown and adipose tissue. Melatonin plays an important role in various immune disorders as well, such as infections, autoimmunity, and immune senescence. I believe we are just touching the tip of the iceberg with this one. I spent hours of research looking into melatonin, and my primary concern was alleviated. I no longer believe that if I take it in pill form, my body will stop making it as much through a negative feedback loop. There's no evidence pointing to that. It's just not true. But there are certainly a lot of people making those claims. I think COVID vaccines, those sure helped. Not. I think this is what needs to happen. I'll do a 30-day trial and get back to you. Let's see how I feel. Will I notice any changes? Look for that video in the future. And don't forget to subscribe so you're notified when it comes out. Thanks for watching. Nurse Chris out.